This is Isabella Pinteric with Solid Stitch Embroidery. Mark Vassalanton with Vastex International. This is Dave Pomeroy with NBM National Business Media. Greg Brown with All We Do. And you are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 Hosted by Terry Combs and Aaron Montgomery. All right. Well, welcome to the show. It is Friday, September 11th, 2020. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at our success group. Uh, today, we'll be talking specialty platens for screen printing and DTG machines uh, with our friends Eric Naftal and Marsha Derryberry. And I have to remember Marsha Derryberry from Action Engineering. It's uh, <laughs> new and exciting still. And uh, I just got so used to saying it the other way. But Marsha Derryberry and Eric Naftal will be joining us here shortly. And this is going to be a great conversation, Terry. We always... Uh, Obviously, have a lot of fun talking to Marsha and uh, being able to talk about something that's, you know, pretty hot right now. And not only yeah. just, uh, you know, some of the things being printed, but, you know, doing different things. Shirts are great exactly. and all, but uh, getting into some cool placements. And uh, anyhow, I'm getting ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> <laughs> that's how excited I am. But uh, in fact, uh, even before, uh, in fact, I think this was last night, Joe Ortnow said, looking forward to this one. So hopefully, Pretty Joe nice. has tuned in and uh, we have our good friend Eric Campbell also here as usual in the comments taking care of us so we appreciate that. Um, let's hit a couple of uh, quick news items here Terry before we uh, jump into this. Sure. Uh, um, first one that I've got is our friend uh, Nathan Lieber from Lieber Design and Print uh, reached out and he's put out a new video on the basics of picking Pantone colors in Illustrator. Uh, and he's got that over on YouTube and, and we'll get a, a link into the show notes and uh, probably into the comments here as well. So uh, pretty cool stuff that he did, you know, just out of the kindness of his heart. So people could kind of see how to how to pick a Pantone color. Um, but uh, he also won up to that and uh, has secured a discount code from the good folks over at Atlas Screen Supply, who you know very well, Terry, Indeed. Uh, for Pantone books. So uh, if you use the code Lieber, L-E-B-E-R 10, and uh, at the link there, atlasscreensupply.com slash Pantone, blah, blah, blah. Just look up the Pantone book <laughs> or, <laughs> or hit the link in the in the notes here. Uh, you can uh, get that Pantone uh book much reduced. And uh, this is a quote directly from Nathan he said, pretty much the best deal around to buy a Pantone book. So I'm going to believe him. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I never see a discount on those. So that's, that's pretty awesome. And, you know, when I do my classes at Atlas Screen Supply, uh, they always give a discount code for, uh, for the class and it, it's, it might be class 10. It's 10% yeah. discount. And of course, you know, screen printer. So somebody raised their hand and said, what if I type in class 20? Will it? Uh... <laughs> it's worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, there was a resounding, no, that won't uh, work. <laughs> hey, again, worth a try. So, um, <laughs> all right. Real, real quick, Terry, I know you've got uh, something that you want to share, but I want to catch a couple of the regulators here real quick. Cindy King says, good morning. I'll be listening while I'm sewing. So speak up loud, Terry. So I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> for us but i uh, don't think so either <laughs> <laughs> and then our, our good friend christine shreve checking in and, and she will be hosting next week so that uh, is exciting and todd and alan and uh, cal king joining us so awesome all right terry uh, your turn sir <laughs> well I, I just wanted to, to say what uh, on everyone's mind today that 19 years ago today we all know where we were and what we were doing and uh mm -hmm. We here at the Two Regular Guys want to join the, really the rest of the world in remembering all those who lost their lives on 9-11 and, of course, to the families of all those victims as well. It uh, feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, interestingly enough, Terry, I was really brand new at that point into this industry. Um, so, you know, I, I got into the industry in early 2001, and um, I had actually just come back from my very first international trip ever a week before that had happened. Wow. Uh, I went with Scott Fresner over to FESPA in Amsterdam and, uh, you were like, you get home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The timing was, but, but here's the thing I remember, obviously I was there at us screen when the news broke cause we were in Phoenix. So, um, I was already at work and, um, 
you know, obviously that day you, you kind of remember what, what all happened there. But the thing that really stands out to me, Terry, is just how I think that's where I first fell in love with the decorators community is I just remember everybody going, OK, this has happened. It is actually real. Now, what the heck are we going to do about it? And people were coming up with, you know, I remember working with uh, one of the artists and I can't remember if it was Bob Alabaster or somebody like that, but had a really cool uh, American, a bald eagle with the American flag. Do you remember that print? Probably saw sure. it a lot back then. Um, you know, just everybody trying to figure out what they could do to help and support. And, you know, our medium was a t-shirt. And so right. it, it was really incredible to see everybody kind of really just coming together and, and working extremely hard to figure out, you know, what is the little thing that we can do to help right now? And, and like I said, I think that's where I fell in love with the decorators community at that point, just watching everybody, you know, think of other people before themselves. So, um, and, and Aaron, that same community, uh, with, uh, with COVID same, same situation, you yeah. know, what can we do? And, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the folks down at Printed Threads, when they offered to put up stores for people at no cost and, and things yeah. like that, you know, everybody, yeah. uh, everybody getting together and, uh, and, and doing what they can to help. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, it is. It, in fact, that's a really good point, Terry, because, yeah, every time something happens, uh, it seems like the decorators community on whole, their first reaction is, OK, I'll figure out what I need to do for myself after I figure out how I can help other people. Exactly. And it's been cool. It's been, yeah, been amazing to, to be part of that. So, um, all right. And we've got some, uh, uh, regulators here sharing their, uh, their stories as well. So, uh, get in there in the, in the comments section and, and share your story about uh, that time. Gosh, I can't believe how long it's been though, Terry. It's a uh, isn't it amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, I, I was I was feeding my uh, my at the time two year old uh, scrambled eggs. Uh, <laughs> she's now twenty. I was so. say, and and where is that two year old now? Yeah, <laughs> getting ready to go off to college, right? Something yeah, like exactly. That. She's yeah. in college, right? In college, in college. Okay, all right. Uh, well, speaking of decorators community, Terry, uh, we will be hosting our next decorators community party next Friday, so a week from today on September eighteenth, uh, seven p.m. Central Time is uh, center of the universe yeah center of the universe time <laughs> uh so uh we'll be you know like usual just go over to two regular guys.com slash party um if you go over there now that the date's still old so i'll fix that up today or tomorrow um but uh that that's where all the information will be just what i want you guys to do now is get it on your calendar let's uh let's exactly. make it a good time and and uh we'll uh, we'll be there i've got my uh uh in-laws in town that weekend. So um, I will be ready to be there as long as I can. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally kidding. I love my in-laws. I'm totally kidding. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, my jokes are bad. Terry, do you have any jokes that are, are better? Uh, well, I don't know about better, but I have a dad joke. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's, let's try that then. <laughs> All right. What's the last thing Jeff Bezos does before bed? I don't know, Terry. What is the last thing he does? He puts his pajamas on. Uh, <laughs> Amazon. Pajamas. <laughs> yes. If you're if you're listening to the podcast version, it's much better when you see it in writing, but uh, pajamas on. <laughs> pajamas on. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, all right. Uh, Excellent. Um, real quick, Terry, uh, Christine did say how appropriate the cocktail party is the same day as the women in garment decorating version of Two Regular Guys. So glad that worked out. Everybody will need a drink, and uh, after after spending all that time uh, talking uh, about, uh, I, I can't remember what our subject is uh, next week. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you're putting me on the spot. We'll come up with it. <laughs> Christine, Christine knows. knows. Christine, share. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. While she's doing that, uh, before we uh, jump in, Aaron, we want to thank everyone for checking out the Two Regular Guys podcast. If you are listening to this as a podcast version, we would appreciate you sharing with your friends so they can become regulators too. Plus, we would love and appreciate you giving us a review. This is really important to us. Uh, if you could review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or wherever it is you're listening, uh, that would be awesome. 
We are always looking for new guests. If you or anyone you know would like to join us, go to calendly.com slash two. That's the number two regular guys and uh, share your ideas. And we would love to have you on the show. If you're watching us live right now, join in with comments and questions, reach out to industry friends right now to join us too. Excellent. Yes. And Christine, on the spot, as usual, the subject is tips for women thinking of starting a decorating business. Oh, um, correct. That was a test, Christine. That's exactly correct. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Terry, uh, before we get to our guests here, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor, the Impressions Expo. What is Impressions Expo? Impressions Expo, formerly known as ISS, is the premier trade show dedicated to the imprinted and decorated apparel industry. They have five shows that are produced annually in each region of the United States, including Long Beach, California, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Orlando, Florida, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and cap off the year at Fort Worth, Texas. Each of those five annual shows also feature over 30 seminars and hands-on workshops in categories such as screen printing, embroidery, digitizing, digital decorating, and much, much more. Visit ImpressionsExpo.com for more details, and while there, use the promo code REGULARGUYSIE for a free expo pass. Again, make sure you visit ImpressionsExpo.com to get more details, and the two regular guys look forward to seeing you there. All right. Well, thanks very much to the Impressions Expo for uh, their support. And uh, we're uh, talking to them about, uh, you know, trying to figure out what's next and, and being able to share that information. So uh, more from them soon. So make sure you get over to their website and check it out and uh, sign up for their email list and all that good fun stuff. And just tell them the two regular guys sent you. And, but and as uh, always, we'll be uh, we'll be constantly updating the uh, the list for for 2021. Excellent. 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 All right. Well, Terry, let's, let's get to our guests here. I see you've uh, brought in the appropriate headwear wear for this. So uh, we'll, we'll see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Marsha Derryberry is the director of marketing and sales for action engineering. She has 33 years experience in the decorated apparel industry, uh, having been an editor of impressions magazine and editor editor in chief for 20 years. She also was responsible for the educational content development of the impressions X Expo conference program. Uh, Eric Naftal is the president and CEO of Action Engineering, uh, a manufacturer of specialty application pallets for screen and digital printing presses. The company, which has been in business for nearly 30 years, offers specialty pallets for all types of presses. Eric holds an electrical engineering degree from Southern College of Technology. And welcome into the show. Hi, everybody. Hi, regulators. Hey, guys. Thank you. Uh, so, so uh, I just uh, I, I did slip yeah. into my chief's hat because <laughs> Marsha is from Houston. And that's I'm looking Houston. at my paws. I'm looking yeah. at my paws. I don't <laughs> the, want to talk the about NFL, it. The NFL season started last night with a resounding victory for the Chiefs over the Houston Texans. And but Marsha, I know you love the Chiefs because you're a rock well, jock Jayhawk. I'm a, huge, I'm a huge Chiefs fan now, so go Chiefs. Right. <laughs> Someday when my Falcons play. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, and Eric, if you need to mute Terry when he's gloating too much, it's totally okay to do. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he didn't even hear it. He had his headphones. I had my headphones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I said if, uh, if 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 Eric Campbell needs to mute you at any time, uh, that certainly welcome to do that. The gloating gets to be too much. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> he, he, will, he will freely do that. So, yeah. yes. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So. Eric, let's start with you. Uh, you've made a quite a career of manufacturing platens for products other than T-shirts. So uh, I, th this would be a fun thing to start off with. What's the most unusual thing request you've ever had to have somebody be able to print on? <laughs> that is a tough question to put uh, any one particular item at the front end. There's been just so many. Um, yes, a vast majority of everything we do is textile related. Uh, there really is not one thing that you can wear that we have not developed a pallet solution to print on every square inch of it, one way or another. <laughs> nice. Jackets, hoodies, uh, 
pant legs, jeans, shorts, any, any possible part of any one of these wearables. We've developed ways that you can print on every single square inch of it. Uh, for some of the other items outside of the normal textile realm, um, seat cushions, hockey pucks, three ring binders, wow. eyeglass holders, headbands, um, any possible thing in the promotional products arena that is flat and can be printed using the screen print technology. Uh, we've, we've put those pallets on every machine in, in the world at one point or another. Hundreds, gentlemen, hundreds of different pallet designs. Wow. <laughs> been developed. What's on the site right now is just a thumbnail of, uh, of the total number of pallets that have been worked on over the years. So, Wow. Well, uh, you, there were special plans for all these things. I, I thought that it was just me, a cardboard box, an exacto knife, and box sealing tape, <laughs> and uh, I could print on anything. <laughs> yeah, sure can. There, there's lots of ways to get a cat, and that's definitely one of them. <laughs> Certainly not the most efficient, though, Terry. I'm just no, not, 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 not at all. <laughs> um, some of the other really interesting items, I guess, uh, obviously face masks we, we came out with recently. Uh, I say recently, but now it's been almost six months that we've been into this. Um, but outside the area of textiles, um, gentlemen, as I said, every conceivable flat piece of anything in the promotional products arena, we've, we've developed pallets for it. Yeah. Uh, but textiles have been... You know, a vast majority of everything for many years. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm right. just sitting there trying to rack my brain. I, I want to like try to play stump Eric here. <laughs> Can you print this? Can you print that? <laughs> the most unusual palette, however, in, in all reality, it's still related to the textile industry. And before we had ever manufactured an all-over palette, and when all-over palettes were really in their infancy, I got a call from guys at a company called Gullwing, and this was 1996 when Star Wars had just come out. And these guys had the license from Lucasfilm to print all over T-shirts, uh, tons of them for youth. And um, I went and drove to, I think they were in Greensboro. It was about a seven-hour drive from Atlanta. And I drove up, spent the day with them looking at what it is they wanted to do and drove home. That day, uh, I think I left their place at 2.33 in the afternoon, drove home the entire time with the radio off and designed this all-over pallet system in my head. I got back to my shop at midnight, started working, and by the time the sun came up, I had a working prototype. Wow. And wow. Uh, I had to go <laughs> home and crash, go to sleep. But <laughs> later in the afternoon, I drove back up with this prototype to Greensboro. And they had a couple things they needed to talk about with it and uh, a couple little revisions, but it was pretty much game on with that first prototype. And uh, at that point, we got an order for like 50 of these all over pallets. Um, I also had to develop this floor stand system that would come up and support the sleeve areas of, uh, of this all over pallet. And it was electrically interfaced to, uh, to these formulas that they had. They had like 12 of the original generation of formula. Um, and that was, till this day, seriously, probably the number one uh, challenging project that we've really ever had up until face masks came along. Um, so is in terms of, you know, what is the most unusual palette for that time in 1996, that would be hands down the most unusual, difficult thing that we'd ever worked on. And uh, we shipped them and we got paid for them and they worked and everything was great. <laughs> so, and the rest is history, right? <laughs> and we went on to uh, these guys introduced us, by the way, to some of the other really biggest players in the industry. That uh, that one project was something that I cite to this day as really kind of putting us on the path to where we are now. Um, it was it was kind of one of our moonshots, I guess. Nice, nice. That's that's an awesome story. That's an awesome yeah. story. And uh, you know, okay, it wasn't long after that that uh, I went up to the, the guys in uh, Frankfurt to see Fruit of the Loom, and uh, they had us working on a all-over wraparound palette for underwear. <laughs> nice. <laughs> underwear that's fun to wear? Underwear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they were putting all kinds of Disney characters. Maybe it wasn't Disney. Um, 
I can't remember, but it was cartoon characters were being printed all over underwear, front and back, wrap around, all over, print on underwear. There, there was really such a thing. And uh, <laughs> that was kind of fun, too. Um, may I share the screen moment real quick? And, and yeah, share sure, certainly. Yeah, I got a couple things here to kind of quickly throw at you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And for those of you listening on the podcast version, make sure that you get over to uh, facebook.com slash two regular guys, or you can find us on YouTube as well. Uh, and just search two regular guys podcast on, on YouTube and, and you'll be able to see what we're showing on screen, but we'll try to explain it as well. So uh, Eric, what are, what are we seeing here? These are actually the all over wrap around underwear palettes that we made back in the day for Haynes. Um, or excuse me for Fruit of the Limb. And uh, it goes up and down and it wraps around back here. And you can print this side of it, flash it, lift it up, pivot it 180 degrees. And uh, my model's not pivoting right now. And uh, and then print the other side of this thing. That's and, super uh, cool. It was really, <laughs> really cool. Um, other very cool palettes, by the way. I uh, I got to have a quick plug on the brand new palette design. <laughs> I so badly wanted to show you guys this. It's the latest and greatest thing. Um, we call it the Mambo Combo. <laughs> and print on this front end here, it allows you to print zipper hoodies. And nice. this geometry right now perfectly matches the geometry of a zipper hoodie. And of course, the zipper drops down in a slot so that you can print very cleanly across the zipper hoodie. Take the palette off, turn it 180 degrees, and uh, and now you're able to print pockets, two of them at a time. And also you can use this for printing uh, tagless. Uh, the neck seam drops into this crevice, and you're able to do the inside neck printing. So this is uh, the latest and greatest. It was just put up on the website. Uh, actually, I think yesterday. And nice. uh, all right, we love we love to we love it when you saw it here first. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Marsha, was this your first naming as the marketing uh, person? No, Eric came up with that one by himself. There was much discussion over how to spell Mambo though, because we didn't want to black snake banana dance. So yeah, that yeah. is awesome. It's a great name though. I mean, it 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 encapsulates it perfectly. So. <laughs> Nice, nice. <laughs> and, uh, I will uh, exit this now. Okay. All right. Well, while uh, while we're doing that, Marcia, yes. you know, Action, Action has been making platens for screen printing for for many years. Obviously, how has the growth of DTG impacted uh, uh, the business there? Okay. Well, like everyone, you know, we've watched the technology grow over the years and really perfect itself to the autom automated and awesome process that it is now particularly when we looked at um, the short runs and the sampling that you could do instead of screen printing. And now with the on-demand customization that's so hot right now, particularly during COVID. So it's actually several years ago, Eric, who is an engineer, uh, met with his R&D team and decided that it was time to make DTG palettes. So he worked closely with the R&D team at Cornite. And so for several years, we've offered everything from the standard Cornite palette to sleeves, shorts, onesies, uh, tagless printing, zipper hoodie palettes, and then most recently the face mask palettes came out. So we um, build those exclusively for Cornet machines. You can get them from any Cornet dealer. And also um, for Equipment Zone, we're making the face mask palettes for the Epson DTG machines, and those are exclusively available through Equipment Zone. So Terry um, can elaborate on that some more, but mm -hmm. it's really, um, it's becoming, we've been known for screen printing for years and years, but um, digital is, is a growing, growing part of our business as we develop new palettes. Like Eric said, we've developed stuff that you can print on just about anything. And so we're looking to grow that DTG space some more. Cool. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Digital certainly is a, you know, growth area, uh, but I imagine screen printing is still strong for you guys as well. Uh, you know, this was always the joke back in Terry and I's U.S. screen days of, uh, you know, DTG was going to kill screen printing and and Terry was always uh, wholly against that. And and I think still <laughs> still holds true today. I think Terry won that argument. For well, me, it was yeah. more about joking with him. <laughs> well, you know, when uh, Scott Fresner would, uh, you know, we 
the screen printing classes we do at US Screen, uh, Scott Fresner would walk in, hold up the How to Print T-shirts book, uh, and say, hi, I'm Scott Fresner. Uh, here's Terry. He's going to teach your class. But before I leave, I want to let you know that direct to garment will completely take over screen printing within the next two to three years. <laughs> and before he would walk out of the room, I'd go, that is absolutely not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just a couple of years ago, I ran into Scott and he said, hey, uh, Remember when I used to say that DTG was going to take over screen printing and you would say, no, absolutely not. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. So, so Eric, uh, let's, let's get back to talking about some, some of these pallets. You've shown us a couple already. If you've got any others to show us, I'd love to, to see some of those and we can also talk through them for the podcast listeners. Um, but, but talk to us about some of these, you know, you know DTG stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll hit the mass stuff in a little bit. And I know that's obviously really uh, big right now, but what are some of the other, uh, pieces that have been really popular for you guys, both in the screen print and DTG space? Well, I would say that uh, this brand new palette that we just came out with actually kind of covers the three most popular applications that are out there. And that's uh, zipper hoodies are very popular. Tagless, very popular. Okay. Printing on pockets, very popular. And of course, the number one first ever specialty palette I worked on uh, how to print long sleeves on an automatic. That is uh, that is something that the, the first thing ever done here by myself was how to print long sleeves on a precision hydraulic oval. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> you are dating that. yourself with that one, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that was the early 90s. Uh, that was uh, the first ever, ever specialty application palette that was done. Um, after that, we crossed over and figured out how to do it with American and with MHM and, uh, and, and of course, m &R. Um, But let me, uh, may I share the screen again? Yeah, please. Okay. I didn't bring any really pallet samples into my office. That's okay. No, uh, this, this, <laughs> I love this. Uh, you, you know, kind of get to see it on the computer side. That is, that is so cool. <laughs> like, I don't it's have to pick it up and turn it around yeah, exactly. <laughs> Eric, your your engineer is showing though when you <laughs> <laughs> much more efficient. That's you know, right. it's funny that when you mention those uh, precision hydraulic ovals, uh, the the thing about those machines is probably every one of them are still running somewhere. I don't think you no, can. They're, just, they're indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're still running. I, it's I like, a like a twinkie. Like a twinkie. Okay, here we go. Awesome. And, and real quick, uh, Alan House says, oh, wow, don't get the sleeves caught in the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we had the chain guard, by the way. Ah, <laughs> On see? that precision oval, uh, the, the sleeve was not going to win that tug of war. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so right. speaking of sleeves, here's uh, quite a number of the sleeve options that we have available. Um, this one, just your basic 4 by 22 very popular. Over here, we have a 4 by 22 which also allows you to do pockets on the front end. Wow. Okay. Here is a long sleeve palette that is tapered, and, uh, and it maximizes the available area of a sleeve. Okay. You would load this one through the neck, uh, where the neck is back here. The cuff is up in the fore front edge of it. Here's one. It's a combination. You can do some sleeves and turn it around. This one uh, is for long sleeves and it's hinged. Uh, so I'll be able to tell that's hinged. Yeah. Um, Eric, what's that hinge do for for that particular platen? Why would somebody want that? It allows the uh, it allows the pallet to lift up at an angle while you're loading it. So so just easier loading really is, is kind of the 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 sizzle Correct. of that one. Okay, cool. That's and, awesome. and probably unloading. That's that's the yeah. trick of printing yeah. sleeves. Yeah, so uh, it, it just allows uh, you to print completely over the surface of the sleeve, and there's zero deflection. Uh, this design, you could do process on if you really wanted to. Cool. Um, the next one we came out with, we still do we still do manufacture these. We call this the classic sleeve, classic double sleeve, and uh, it has quite an elaborate stabilization system on the front end of it that uh, this oh. bar pivots to the underside of the pallets and stabilizes everything. The latest and greatest that we just came out with 
is actually this one, this last one. And uh, let me see if I have this isolated here. I do. Sweet. <laughs> this is so cool. I, I, <laughs> I don't know why I dig this stuff so much. I am not an yeah. engineer, and I think that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so by the way, guys, the uh, software you're looking at is called SolidWorks. Um, I have been using it since 2003. It is the most unbelievably efficient and effective way to take an idea out of your head and put it on paper, for lack of a better way to put it on a computer, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Uh, you know, something it. like this, uh, after having used the software for so long, I can come up with an idea for a new palette design and, and, and have it in this format within, you know, literally 20, 30 minutes. And we could be ready for manufacturing in, in 10 minutes after that. So it's uh, it's it's great. It allows us to take our ideas out of our head and produce them within an hour, literally. So we call this the easy sleeve. And uh, it is by far the very best long sleeve printing solution we've come out with. It's available for use on all manual, on, on the, all man, uh, automatic machines, excuse me. And uh, what else? Cool. Here's another really cool one, by the way. Speaking of, you know, <laughs> it uh, looks it looks like underwear. <laughs> <laughs> this is the panty palette. Ah, gotcha. Okay, very popular panty palette uh, for printing on the front part of the panty. There it is. There it is. Yeah. You want to yeah. print on the backside of the panty, also known as the backside. <laughs> for our podcast listeners it's exactly the way you're imagining it <laughs> and he's off that way oh, that's how you do it okay <laughs> oh, boy. Well, uh, cool. we'll leave it that then i'm going to stop sharing screen now <laughs> we've done a ton i can't even begin to count how many unique independent designs we've done over the years, every possible thing that you can wear. Uh, we have printed on every square inch of it. And uh, I'm sure we'll figure out more ways to print on more things. We are I working. imagine every time the phone rings, you're like, okay, I wonder what challenge is that <laughs> it's on the other end of that line. <laughs> we get a ton, we get a ton, a, a thousand uh, percent increase in the last couple of years of custom orders. And wow. people send us samples. They tell us, here's what we want to print. Here's where we want to print it. I've got a Hicks machine or, you know, I've got a Challenger. And uh, this is this is what we want to do. Can you make that happen for us? And, uh, you know, 99 times out of 100, we say yes. Nice. And the other great phone call, by the way, that I can always expect to get at least a few times a year. Is, I've got a new palette design I want to share with you, but I want royalties for it. <laughs> and I want, but there's nothing you could possibly design that I have not done already. <laughs> you know what it is, all right. I mean, you know, if you want to talk about it for fun, but talking about it for royalties is just not going to happen. I'm a hard, <laughs> well, that's like the person in your seminar who goes, "I have the greatest T-shirt idea of all time," and right. you're you're up in front going, "No, you don't." <laughs> <laughs> I probably could name five people right now who are doing that that this very minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hey, more power to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, I was writing uh, some copy this morning before the show for Equipment Zone for a brand new platen that you just created for them, uh, uh, 16 wide by 10 uh, to print uh, on a DTG printer to print hoodies yeah, so the rough pocket falls away. And uh, so that was Harry's idea, by the way, all the way. Very good. Very good. Build. I'm then, sure he uh, will. Sent that and he said, here's what to do next. And, uh, <laughs> that, and he said, you got it. <laughs> I, I guess that's why he's calling it on the website the Harry Oster uh, uh, hoodie <laughs> he platen. No, that's he's not his, really. <laughs> that's his design. You know, he told us what to do. We were the ones that obviously did it, and, uh, but he knew exactly what it was that, that his customers would need and, and what they wanted. And uh, it's a well, great you know, a lot, and, and just like I'm sure all of your customers, we get qu questions all the time. How do I print on this? And and so. You know, we just try to try to make it uh, come up with the easiest way possible so that 
that uh, obviously so there's not very much spoilage but you know speaking of new platins though the the hot new product who knew a year ago that the hottest product going would be face masks and you know and, and as you, and when you walk into a store or walk into a restaurant or whatever for all of us who can walk into restaurants um you know everybody's got a different plat or different uh, a different mask so there's different configurations so eric talk to us about mass decorating and and the challenges that you've had to to overcome challenges to overcome were numerous um this happened so fast it is uh it is just one of the most exciting times ever that we went through as a company i went through as a business owner and also as an, uh, an engineer so i got i got word from ryan moore to get ready to print on face masks. He was the first person that ever said anything about face masks are coming. And obviously he was right. And uh, before the CDC made the announcement that they were recommending face masks, we were very well into the R and D on what it would take to print on these things. And uh, however, we made a big major error. And that is the, the initial palettes that we developed were based on the same design of hold down that we had been producing for quite a number of years to print on jackets. And it was a, a hold down system that had a lot of parts, a lot of processes to manufacture. They were also expensive, somewhere in the neighborhood of you know, five fifty, six hundred dollars $600 was the initial price of these things. And uh, <coughs> pardon. We, uh, we had two issues. So we, we had a, a face mask palette design that was way overbuilt. And uh, we also had no idea how many different face mask designs there were gonna be. And so initially I worked with Ryan to develop a printing solution for the all made form fit masks, which are still to this day, I think the best ones on the market, they're incredible. Um, and we, uh, we didn't realize that there were gonna be quite a number of other formats of face masks that were being offered. So my friends at Haynes were in touch with us. Uh, my friends at Sanmar and Gildan were in touch with us. And we started getting in samples from all of the mills and started realizing that, you know, there's no way we're going to come up with one, one solution fits all. Uh, but we were able to narrow down the field to basically three sizes of these face mask palette. And uh, then we very quickly had to regroup on the palette design itself and uh, came out with a design that we could mass produce. Um, I sat down at my desk one morning and did a spreadsheet. The, uh, the, the, the minimal possible demand for these face masks, the maximum possible demand for these face masks. And I was, I was shocked. <laughs> I mean, I, I looked at you, okay, what happens if 1% of the, un of, of the globe needs a face mask? And what happens if just 1% of those are gonna get printed? How many pallets is that going to take? And, you know, it was obvious to me that there's not a chance that we could possibly keep up with demand with the pallet design that we had. And we went back to the drawing board, myself, my uh, R&D team, and we came up with the very simplest thing that could get the job done and be durable. Uh, we took the price point down from 600 to 150 we took the manufacturing time down from 10 hours to 20 minutes. And wow. so it wasn't really 20 minutes, but comparatively. <laughs> yeah. We then found out that, uh, okay, that's great. Now we need some pretty incredible assembly jigs. I converted half of my shop's assembly space with uh, 20 tables that are completely outfitted with these assembly jigs that allow us to really mass assemble these. And uh, we can, we we got through the demand. We were behind for quite a number of weeks, but we're completely caught up now. I've got a pretty significant inventory ready to go, and uh, those were the challenges of basically getting ready for this. Um, from a printer's perspective, the challenge is, you know, which palette to get because it's not going to be one palette works for everything. Yeah. And if you've got a supplier for face masks right now. Chances are he's going to run out of stock and you're going to have to go to somebody else. Chances are you're going to have another customer that wants a different kind of design, a different kind of face mask. 
So for the printers, you know, a challenge is which one of these face mask palettes do we bring in now? And uh, so mm -hmm. we recognized that from the start that we were going to have uh, printers that didn't know which one of these things to buy. So we came out with some pretty good package deals. Buy all three of them, you get a pretty significant discount on them. Buy just two of them, and, and you get a pretty good discount on those as well. Nice. Um, what else? Uh, as far as printing, um, it's just like printing on uh, a T-shirt. Um, but I guess I forgot to say, the big, the big thing here, of course, are that the face masks are two-ply. And they're two-ply because you get a lot better protection from two layers of material. So obviously, you have to have a hold down. You have to have uh, the ability to hold two layers in place without the use of adhesive. And that's why you have these special pallets. That's why you have to use this type of setup to hold both layers still while they're being printed. And uh, from the printing perspective, you need to have this hold down. You don't ever want to use spray glue on these, even if you have single layer. It's, uh, it's going to be a bad idea to use spray glue on face masks and then tell somebody to put this thing on your face yeah. and try to breathe through it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. But as far as the printing parameters, exactly like T-shirts. Same squeegee pressures, same angles, same speeds. Um, and it's uh, face mask palettes have been uh, an enormous boost for our volume. For a couple of months, they represented almost 50% of what we're shipping. That's not quite the case anymore. We have seen uh, a little bit of a lull. It's to be expected. It always happens this time of the year. And um, I am expecting that when the weather starts to cool off, uh, I think we're going to see an increase in uh, demand for face mask pallets. Um, if we don't, we don't. Nobody knows how long this thing is going to go on. Yeah, it's the, it's the big question. When? How long is this going to last? Nobody knows. Everybody's being very careful. I uh, I'm being careful of how much inventory I have for it. It's a hot market, and nobody wants to finish off the hot market with you know ten thousand units in stock. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's, yeah. uh, it's a balancing act, really, to, as to how much inventory to keep and yeah. how, how prepared are you. And, sure. uh, you know, when we first started, I wasn't prepared. Nobody was. Yeah. No. The mills weren't. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, the first guy on the job, the, the first masks out were those ones from Bella. And they shipped, who knows, how many millions of these things those guys did. I mean, they were the very first one on the market with something to something to use. Um, and it wasn't very long after that the rest of the mills got on uh, on track that uh, that we also got on track. And uh, everybody's on track now. There's uh, no delay in supply from the mills. Uh, we're completely up to date also on our shipping schedules for these things. And uh, we've even been able to come out with some other Alternative, some other uh, varieties of face mask palettes. Um, we're getting a ton of custom demands for these. Uh, youth face mask palettes have become very popular. We can make these things as small as like one and three quarter by one and three quarter. And uh, we've made them, you know, a lot of them at that size. Yeah. They're itty bitty little face masks. I, yeah. saw, I, I saw a news article yesterday where this little two-year-old baby was kicked off of a plane because it didn't have a face mask. So I, I don't know. What <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a baby and you're taking it on a plane, you better have a face mask on it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, of course it should be printed somewhere. <laughs> yes. Get, get it printed. Yeah. There we go. You know, I, I was mentioning a couple of weeks ago, I was out in Huntington beach and, uh, and first time ever that I went souvenir shopping and bought souvenir face masks. Oh, so. oh. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. March, I want to shift gears here just a little bit. Um, you know, the majority, maybe all of your customers are, are manufacturers. Um, so has, has the lack of trade shows impacted business in that regard and, and has the COVID situation in general, impacted businesses outside of the face face mass um 
I think we can all agree the lack of trade shows has really hurt us all. We all came out of Impressions Expo Long Beach just fired up. You know, it was going to be a great year. It was a record-breaking show. And who knew two, three weeks later, the world was just going to stop. Correct. And so, uh, like Eric, Eric pretty much answered this question. He, he and the team here at Action were so proactive. This was before I came, obviously. But um, they were so proactive in catching on to the face mask palette um, trend and then like being the only exclusive manufacturers of them in the beginning um, and pretty much owning the marketplace now with the face mask palettes. So um, we we're taking a whole organic approach the way a lot of people are because we still we need those product introductions. We need those face to face. I think one of the most heartbreaking parts of it is, is not getting that networking. And we're all saying that to each other on these virtual happy hours and these podcasts and webcasts. Like we miss each other. We're a family. And that, that opportunity to get together and have that peer on peer discussion where you're not talking to a competitor down the street and you can really get those converse, good conversations in. We, we're not able to do that at trade shows. So we're doing like everyone else is doing. We're um, really boosting our social media presence to really explain our business, our business philosophy, our products, we're creating videos. Uh, we're having we're sharing videos that our customers have produced using our palettes and some of our other products, and um, doing e blasts and becoming as active as many social media groups as we can. I'm a part of all kinds, as you guys know on Facebook. There's a million different screen printing groups, digital sure. groups, um, even global ones. We're part of Screen Print India, Screen Print Africa, Screen Print Sri Lanka. I've made wow. a ton of international friends lately. Um, so we're really um, taking the COVID thing and doing it virtually. That's, that's really the only way to do business right now for everybody. And as far as, you know, the face mask thing, as Eric said, it's a hot market, but it's not the only thing we do. We're, we're world famous for our squeegees and our flood bars. You know, the always awesome roller squeegee, which is a really cool tool that flattens down the fibers and gives it a real soft retail look on your print. Those are famous. We have our badass manual squeegees, which are cool. Our double bladed squeegee, which is really neat for the automatic machines. And so then we've got flood bars. The wing flood bars is, have been popular for years and years. So it's not like we're going out of business once the face mask trend train ends, you know, yeah. as I said, we're not holding a lot of inventory and we're still selling a lot of our other products as well. So we're not, not, not just promoting face masks right now. Um, I'm part of my job is to promote a lot of the other stuff that we offer as well. Awesome. Awesome. So real quick here, uh, regulator from uh, Gooses, I think is from Sweden. And I'm going to see if this makes sense. And, and Eric or Marcia, feel free to jump in here to, to answer this. Um, the question is, is it a diff? Is it a different on the pallets for cotton or like three blends? I, I'm thinking we're talking about some of the, the face mask pallets. Is there different ones that you would use for different types there? And I think he's I, referring to the tri blends. Yeah. Yeah. I can answer that question. Okay, perfect. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, easy. I love it. <laughs> the material so, the thank, you thank you for watching very, very much. And uh, the answer, uh, obviously, the tri blends are more fibrous. You're going to have some challenges with fibrillation. Um, flatten them, roll them, maybe use the roller on them. Use a double stroke on your underbase if you got underbase. Uh, obviously, there's ways to flatten them during uh, during the printing process. Roller squeegees are going to be the best solution for flattening. Nice. But in terms of what would be the challenges, the only real thing is going to be fibrillation. Yeah. And, uh, but other than that, no, there's there's no other challenge that I'm aware of. Cool. Okay. Very good. And then one one more quick one here. Uh, Cal King says, waiting for the new automatic self-tape platens. I'm not sure if that's <laughs> a conversation. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Car, yeah. uh, he has a, he has an idea for that, and he would like royalties. So. <laughs> well, so uh, it's just the four of us here. Um, what, <laughs> Eric, uh, what's the substrate that you're seeing in the, in the future that uh, – that you you're thinking that hey we we need a new uh, we need a new palette for this what's it going to be and as I said just we're just among friends so it's okay to share secrets. <laughs> <laughs> you might know something I don't know unless you're you know possibly talking about the new anti gravity suit coming out from <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> and, uh, but I, you I could print know. it all back, right? <laughs> there's you know there's the very 
the athletic material that is always a challenge, very fibrous. Um, other than that, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the anti-gravity suit. And, uh, <laughs> what will that do for decorators? It will allow us to rise above the noise and confusion. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. It's Kansas way we're selling, I guess. Nice. Marcia, you can... He doesn't have a <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I don't know, Randy. You guys tell me, is there some new secret material coming out I'm not aware of? We're, uh, we're just um, trying to get the get the secrets. That's all we're going for. So have, uh, <laughs> you know, there's there's nothing I'm aware of. I have friends at all the major mills and we talk somewhat regularly. Those guys are always researching and developing and kind of sharing some ideas back and forth. But as far as I know, there's no new you know, game changing material on the horizon. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, Marsha, you can use some of that in the marketing material. I'm going to look forward to uh, seeing that okay. in, in the post there, the, the rise above the noise. I have to find a stock photo of an anti gravity suit. So that yeah. <laughs> Fully decorated, yeah. front and back. Yeah. <laughs> You have a power for AOP anti gravity suits. <laughs> uh, we can make that. I know we can. Uh, uh, Eric can make anything. Oh, exactly. <laughs> nice. We just job. Yeah. Yeah. So Marsha, let, let's uh, talk real quick. You know, fairly new to action engineering here. So tell us about your new duties. I know you've already talked a little bit about some of the things you're promoting and stuff like that. But but when you came to action, what what did you say? Okay, this is what I put my flag in the ground. This is what and and this is what Eric's asked me to do. Yeah. Um, well, I'm so thankful again for the opportunity to work here. I've been here about two months already. I can't believe that. But it was just a blessing having left impressions to be able to land here and stay in Atlanta and stay in the industry and everything. So we've been known for 28 years, like I said, for our standard platens, especially of pallets and uh, specialty attachment pallets and squeegees and flood bars and accessories. We sell rubber. Um, so we've had this great reputation for years and we're in just about every U.S. dealer that you can think of. We have a great network of international dealers, so we are global. But when I came on, Eric really asked me to take things to a more um, general level and let's get our brand recognition really grown, particularly globally. And so I've been working with a lot of partners, both in the U.S. and globally that I've known throughout the years through my 33 career in the industry. And so we've got some really great things in the works. Stay tuned for that. Um, some exciting stuff to really kind of boost our presence and um you can also order direct from us at actionengineering.com. So you don't have to go through a dealer. We love to use our dealers, but um, uh, we are just going to be promoting all kinds of like the combo mambo is the next thing. Get ready. You're going to be hit with um, press releases media because I'm coming. <laughs> I, I got press releases for 33 years. So now it's my turn to be on the other end of things. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm the customer now. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I was telling, I was telling an old friend from impressions yesterday. I said, you know, I used to get like hundreds of press releases a day because I got all the press releases and now I get like five emails a day. So <laughs> Bam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but I'm just trying to help us boost, boost our brand recognition and really we are a household name, but become even more of a household name and partner with some great companies and, and get a lot more social media presence out there. We want to be all over the place and do some great videos and some great webcasts and some tutorials and, just all kinds of stuff like that. So awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. Sounds yeah. like a fun project. I asked all Marcia right. to help us find ways to market that we have not been doing. Nice. And she has done an incredible job oh, of finding you. ways for us to uh, to spend our marketing budget and uh, ways that we're going to be able to you know qualify how well these marketing efforts did. Um We've met a number of times and she's put together an enormous number of options to market that don't involve direct mailers or going to shows or magazine ads and, you know, other ways that we can help spread the word other than what we've done nonstop year after year, decade after decade. And uh, I am just absolutely thrilled with the programs that she's come up with, some of the alternative ways to get the word across and to get the word out. And, uh, has performed every bit as well as expected and beyond. And nice. I'm so glad to have a lady here. I can't tell you. Uh, it's an honor to have really. her here. Yeah. Well, we, we were, we were pretty excited to, 
we were pretty excited to hear Marsha uh, finding a, a place there at Action Engineering. So that's awesome. So yeah. Eric and Marsha, go ahead. Go ahead, Marsha. I was going to say it was funny because when I put on Facebook that I had left impressions, I didn't check Facebook that entire week and everyone was sending their thanks and condolences and good wishes and stuff. Well, I guess Eric had messaged me like half an hour after he saw that. And oh. <laughs> well, I didn't see it for like three days and then I got a text message, call me. So by the next Tuesday I was in his office and we went to lunch and he wine, I always say he wine and dined me on diet Coke and black bean soup. And here I am. And <laughs> particularly during a pandemic to land with such a great company. It's not just Eric and the executive team, everyone out on the factory floor. These are the nicest people. They've worked for Eric for years because it's such a great company, such a great guy to work for. I got to stay in the industry that I love and I'm able to use my relationships that I've cultured and nurtured and built all these years to really find these things that Eric has been talking about that, you know, and my, my knowledge of the media that you don't just have to do trade shows and print magazine ads. There's all sorts of other options that, that um, are available for both paid and free advertising. You know, the internet gives us the ability to get our messages out there without a lot of cost involved at all. I mean, if you just want to boost a Facebook post, it's eight bucks. I mean, you know, right. so but right. do some really neat programs and I don't know, it's just, it's exciting and fun and I'm having a blast working early, early morning hours and spending the afternoons with my dog and it's just great. Fantastic. Awesome. awesome. Well, so uh, Eric and Marcia, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, last question. How can our listeners reach out to you? Eric, you want that one or me? Please do, ma'am. Okay. Well, I was going to say um, most, most U.S. dealers um, care our products. If you're looking for the Corny face mask palettes or any of the other specialty attachment or standard palettes that we do for Corny, you can go to any Corny dealer. Um, like we said, we now have the new one for Harry over at Equipment Zone and as well as the face mask palettes for the Epson machines. Those are exclusively available through Equipment Zone. You can find us at actionengineering.com. Inquiries, that's with an I, not an E. Everybody messes that up, so let the editor clear that up. <laughs> Inquiries at actionengineering.com will get you an answer quickly from our very knowledgeable staff. And our phone number is uh, 800-717-1000. We got lucky enough to have one of the easiest phone numbers in the city of Atlanta. Uh, 800-770. I'm sorry? It's 770. Oh, is it 770? I'm sorry. See, I didn't even know. 770, 717-1000. <laughs> yeah, but maybe. also, you can find us on all the social networks. Just look up our Action Engineering. You'll find us all over the place. We do have a YouTube channel and a Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Fantastic. thank you guys so much for being here. Really was great to get to talk to you. I learned a ton, saw a ton of cool things. Uh, jazz to go print something, really. Thanks for having us. It was a blast. We love doing these with you guys. And I watch you guys every week and I try to do the happy hours, but you know, they're so late on the East coast. I got to not open my Mick ultra until like seven 30. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, All right. Thanks guys. Thank you very much. Both of gentlemen. Thanks Thank you very much. All right. Very good. Awesome. awesome. Aaron. Yeah, oh. it was great. Um, in fact, <laughs> yeah, really got it. Got a question that we're not going to be able to answer, but maybe they can answer this in the comments. Uh, Jeffrey says, uh, has the pandemic impacted your ability to source high quality scotch? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll let, we'll let that uh, happen in the background. And then uh, the second part of this is, can you get Terry a whiteboard for his background like everybody else? <laughs> but I have this great ping, uh, 1863 Battle of Gettysburg. <laughs> yeah. And and a, a stack of the uh, um, yellow legal pads in front of you. So you can take your notes there. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Junior yellow legal pads. <laughs> <laughs> Terry's a mobile guy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Have legal pad. We'll travel. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and Jeffrey, just so you know, in our private chat in the background here of the StreamYard service, uh, Eric did mention, no, it has not. So um, we, clearly high quality scratch is still available. So good. Good to know. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of Eric's, Eric Campbell, our, our intrepid producer that uh, does a ton of work for us and we really appreciate it. It must be that massive paycheck we send him that really gets him to work so hard. Um, oh wait, no, we don't send him any paycheck. <laughs> he, he's amazing and we appreciate every every second of, of having an opportunity to work with him. Uh, he puts on a wonderful program every Friday 
at 2.30 Mountain Time. Now, for the rest of you in Central Time, it's 3.30 in the center of the universe. <laughs> mountain, mountain Daylight Time. I'm in oh, Mountain God, see, Time. Now we're gonna get <laughs> Eric, we're just going to have to change that to Central Time and call it a good. Because anyhow... <laughs> Today uh, on The Take Up, and that's the name of his program. It's a wonderful program, totally worth checking it out. Uh, today it's all about emblems, crests, and detailed design digitizing. So if you're an embroiderer or want to be one, uh, this is the place to be. You can catch him at facebook.com forward slash eric.campbell, and uh, you will uh, be able to take in all of that wonderful information that Eric shares every Friday. So get over there. Um, also, uh, Demystifying Next Level Digitizing webinar is in the recorded format and uh, people are still gobbling it up. So you can uh, be part of that as well and, and get all that good information. It talks about better running, bolder, more beautiful embroidery with the faster cycle from concept to completion. And you can get access to that at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Eric D-D. And that's Eric with an H, E-R-I-C-H-D-D. So uh, check that out. Terry, what about you? Uh, Still got a show potentially, or not a show, a class. I still have a class. It's still on the schedule. Complete screen printing business course at Atlas Screen Supply in Chicago, November 14th and 15th. Uh, they they still have it on their schedule, and uh, so do I. And uh, all my upcoming uh, classes and events you can find at terrycombs.com under tour dates. It's a little sparse for everyone. But uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be adding some tentative uh, uh, information on there, ho hopefully this weekend. But Aaron, how about you? What's what do you have coming up? Well, so the, Terry, the big book of travel for 2021 is it at least getting a couple things written in it? I mean, it, it, yeah. it is uh, my my son's wedding in New York City that was postponed from October till next March is in there, and uh, that's nice. Awesome, okay. congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> awesome uh, for me, Terry. I've got uh, Small Business Saturdays tomorrow. Uh, at, at first, I put it, ideas with a question mark in there because I was looking for ideas. So if you have ideas of things you'd like for me to cover on small business Saturdays, we like to cover a lot of topics like business planning and how to set goals and, and, and topics like that. But uh, I changed the question mark into a period. So tomorrow we're going to be talking about ideas, ideas for posts to make, uh, ideas for marketing, just some some concepts that uh, we can use to uh, grow our business, especially as we get into the fourth quarter here. So that'll be at 8 a.m. Central Time, Center of the Universe Time. Uh, and you can check, <laughs> check that out over at liveosg.com or at Facebook at facebook.com slash our success group pro. So uh, small business Saturday is happening tomorrow. And then uh, another reminder that our open enrollment period is, is happening now for our master of, of success inner circle program. It's a, it's a mastermind group that's on top of the uh, bi-monthly training that we do at our success group. So uh, if you want to enroll for that, it spaces are limited. Uh, so get over to our success group.com forward slash MOS, which stands for masters of success. Uh, we are accepting applications for that. So we're excited. It, it, this is uh, t the next evolution of our success group for me, Terry. And, and uh, I'm, I can't be more excited about it. I think this is really going to do some things to change some people's worlds and businesses. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Terry. Well, good stuff. Uh, good timing today. We just wonderful show all the way around. We, we want to thank Marsha and Eric for joining us today. Uh, again, go check out actionengineering.com and uh, tell them you saw them over at the two regular guys and, and want to know more about all the amazing things they've been doing for I believe 30 plus years is what they said. So super cool. So thanks yeah. to them very much for being here. And uh, actually, Marsha and Eric are going to be on a webinar with me next week, next Thursday at Equipment Zone. And uh, <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll be having a similar conversation, but specifically about direct-to-garment platen. So we also want to thank our show producer, as you said before, Eric Campbell. You can find him at ericcampbell.com. Neither of their moms know how to spell Eric, apparently. Uh, moms <laughs> out there, E-R-I-C. <laughs> <laughs> I think Eric Campbell's mom paid extra for that H, just like my mom paid extra for the two A's. You know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, well, so next week, Terry, as we talked about at the top of the show, uh, we're going to be turning over the microphones again for our quarterly opportunity to uh, get the Women in Garment decorating group. Uh, it's all, now a Facebook group as well that uh, Christine Shreve has put together. And, and, uh, 
she's going to again talk about uh, people, get, women getting into the business, and and got a wonderful panel. I don't have all the names in front of me right now, but uh, the one name that uh, that stands out, and and <laughs> we'll get all the names posted here today. And I apologize for not having them in front of me right now, but uh, Kelly uh, DeFree stands out because she's been on this program with us, the Crystal Ninja. Uh, Absolutely, and, lots and of fun. Just a, a wonderful group of uh, women that are going to be joining Christine next week. We love it because Terry and I get to get out of the way and and be regulators ourselves and just exactly learn and, <laughs> and listen. So uh, really one of our, our favorite shows that we get to do every quarter. So looking forward to that next week. All right. And until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery. And we are the two regular guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.